Here we are. Quentin, what do you make of the idea that this is the golden age of television? Can movies compete? Mm. Yeah. Um, of course. Yeah, well, I think it's, a, it's, 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 it's definitely a, a really great age for television right now. I don't uh, um, I kind of I tend to think of the 70s as the golden age. I think this is a new silver age, frankly, to tell you the truth. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, uh, Except the golden age of television was the 70s. Well, I grew up in the 70s, and I really I really liked the shows back then. You know, like like, <laughs> like Hunter. No, that's the 80s. <laughs> well, that's the 80s. That is the 80s. That's, okay. that's different. Jake and the Fat so Man. Like, that's the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, you, oh, wait, 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 like but, James Garner, what was that one? Oh, Rockford you... Files. Well, that, that was the <laughs> good <laughs> really? show, you know. Really? Uh, well, yeah. Well, so, I mean, uh, well, frank, I mean, frankly, to tell you the truth, I actually get a little tired. So that's better than well, the no, Sopranos. Well, well, let me tell you. Well, let me tell you how I feel about it. In one way, it's like funny because in the you know, it would always bothered me in the '60s and then the '70s and shows where you know, you'd have an episode and it was such a one-off that nothing right. that ever happened on that show ever affected it ever again. Right. All right. I mean, how many times did Little Joe fall in love and then she would die at the end of the episode and she was never brought up ever ever again, <laughs> even though that time it was really love. I liked it better that way. Well, now we. <laughs> Now, now we have arcs. Yeah, now we've arcs. swung the pendulum completely oh, yes. in another direction where now everything is a soap opera. Everything is a serial drama. If you didn't watch the first episode or the second episode, you're completely lost. Can you imagine if they, in the 70s that previously on Bonanza? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> previously. <laughs> okay. David Frum, is Jeb Bush's candidacy salvageable? Great question. Um, it was... Never salvageable, wow. and and uh, and and the book didn't help. Well, the book is an example of why, because pe when when Jeb Bush got asked the questions about Iraq, um, he stumbled and fumbled, and and there was a queue of people offering yes. helpful suggestions about what to say, but th there was no answer. And look, I, I was involved in this administration. I was a supporter of, of the Iraq War, and President. The elder President Bush had some uh, disobliging things to say about um, some of us who were involved with that. And I have strong feelings about all of that. But the, the, the key fact about this story, the situation for the Republican nomination is we owe the, the new nominee of our party, whoever it is, the chance to be his own or her own person with his or her own story not beholden to the recent past. And that's why the Jeb Bush candidacy was, was a mistake from the start, because it turned the 2016 election into a referendum on things that happened a decade and a half ago. And that's not fair to anybody. It's not fair to the voters. It's not fair to the candidate. It was all a mistake. And he's a crummy candidate. He couldn't. Crummy. He's just crummy. He, he couldn't. He's there, he had he's an unsolvable not, problem. So, but he, yeah, he could, he like he's been, not that bright. That's an unsolvable problem. He's he, not a bright guy. He he's not. Been, he could have been Andrew it, so Jackson and Ronald Reagan rolled into one. But he, he wasn't. Solve the problem. No, he wasn't. He wasn't either of those. That he, didn't help. He, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Anthony Weiner, given his affiliation as an independent, is Bernie Sanders an appropriate standard bearer for the Democratic Party? Well, it is a big question he hasn't really answered. Yeah, I would have this conversation with him on the floor all the time. I'd say, you know, come join the, come join us. And he'd say, no, I'm, a, I'm not a Democrat. I don't believe in what you guys, you guys are doing it all wrong. And, so, and, they, and now he's gone. And now, and that's my Larry David impression. And now, yeah, yeah. And, but now he's gone to saying, I don't, I not only want to be part of the party, I want to be the standard bearer for the party. And there is a practical reason he's doing it. You really can't get elected as a socialist or an independent. But it does kind of eat into his authenticity thing. I mean, he's got to say, look, I'm not really a Democrat, but I'm doing it to get elected. And I'm not doing this thing for, you know, I'm doing it for pragmatic well, can't reasons. can you caucus with the Democrats? No, no, he then... totally, and by the way, yeah, I, I, I mean, love the guy. I mean, I, mean, I, I love the guy. And, and I... And you know his and his views on single payer health care, I, I believe is, is is the right thing to do. And he got the Iraq War right. I got it wrong. That's not the point. The point is of this question is one that I've actually puzzled a little bit. The guy, if the guy is really this authentic guy, and the bottom line is he's making this practical decision to do it, and he's not this this pure well, guy oh, that doesn't on. do anything. For it seems reasons. like a minor point. It uh, is. Uh, as far as political compromises go, this is way down the Totally, list. totally. But okay. I, I, I answer so the question. Uh, and, yeah, okay. and, and, and he is also the second best candidate for the Democratic nomination. So that's, okay, that's Okay, cool. there you go. Uh, Jillian, how has, has, no, Jillian, has the refugee crisis in Europe created a human trafficking problem. Absolutely. I, I don't know why they're asking you that, but I'm sure <laughs> well, you can answer any question. I actually did just get back from Austria and Hungary and oh. Serbia and Croatia. Well, that's why they're asking. 
Um, yeah, it definitely has because you have countries like. Oh, I'm like... sorry, Jillian's mom asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got back. From I did. There. Yeah. Spent, okay. a, spent some time um, reporting on both the government side of it and the refugee side of it. And I think what we have right now, basically, is a situation where Germany has said, come, we'll, we'll create a life for you. You have opportunity here. And countries on the periphery, out of very valid concerns about security, about economics, have, have been a little bit more hesitant. And that dissonance is creating a situation where it's the perfect business opportunity for human traffickers. They could not have it better. I don't know why we don't uh, cr create a, some sort of system where we could train them to then go back to their own country and fight for that country. <laughs> Doesn't somebody have to stay in the Middle East and make the Middle East a place to live? Not everybody in the Middle East can, can live in Europe. That's true, but I think people are looking at, frankly, America's commitment to this. You see countries like Ukraine where people are willing to But what to about their fight. own commitment to their own culture? No, I think they're profoundly committed to it. I talked to one really? Syrian guy. Really? Why are they that, leaving? Well, I talked to one Syrian guy, a young guy, and he was basically saying that he feels pinched in the middle. He doesn't support Assad. He's going to get cracked down on that side. Sure. He doesn't like the Islamic State either. He doesn't have weapons. He doesn't have, you know, people to fight with. What's he going to do? Uh, find other people to fight with. Yeah. I mean, where, where are all these moderates I always hear about? This mm -hmm. is, the, you know, oh, Bill Maher, you're so hard on the Muslims. What about the moderates? I'm all for the moderates. They're for me, too, by yeah. the way, real moderates. Yeah. So... Let's get a moderate army together. I don't think we have a lot of support for them, though. I mean, look at what's happening in Ukraine right now. You have people who are organized, who are willing to fight for their country and die for their country. And the U.S. can't even, like, give them weapons and help them out a little bit when well, Russia's I mean, invaded. Lot, but refugee crises are about the powerless, right? People who are refugees are generally right. the most powerless people around. The, old, the idea of, oh, only if you were tougher. Yeah. I don't know if that's no, no, really no. the answer. I'm just saying, why don't we help them? But... Not everybody who is a moderate in the Middle East can leave the Middle East. I, yes. mean, I mean, there just isn't room, is there? No, I think we need to be doing more to help those moderates. Right, okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, what does the panel think of ISIS taking responsibility? Well, that's a good thing, responsibility. For the Russian airliner that exploded out of the Sinai this week. What are the two sides to that? What are the two answers? It's, uh, well, it's, I'm ba against, it's bad I'm that they did it. it. Yes. It's bad that they did it if they did it, and it's a horrible thing that happened. And I mean, I think it's, I mean, I don't know what the other, <laughs> it's not exactly a yuck fest question, is it? It's like, no, no, and this is not always a yuck fest, especially, we're not even on TV anymore. <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> I only do this because I have to. Um, <laughs> 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 Let's talk about your new movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, look, they're all ready to see it. It's a, yeah, now, this is another Western? Yeah. Uh -huh. This is strange to me, because the last one was a Western. I've never known you to do two in a row of the same genre. Mm -hmm. you're, you're Kubrick-esque in that you yeah, like yeah. one movie doesn't rep, mm -hmm. you know, look like the last one that came along. Mm -hmm. Why two Westerns in a row? Well, one, I love Westerns, and two, part of the thing is, you know, you, uh, for that almost exact reason you're talking about, you do, the, I, you know, I do something like Kill Bill, where I've never done a martial arts movie before, and then you kind of learn how to do it by the course of doing it. Sure. It actually is part of the fun. I'm like, uh, in Kill Bill, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do the crazy 88 fight scene that happens in there, but I figured but it commi would... you commit to doing it and you'll learn. And you knew it would be violent. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> But the thing is, though, in the case of Django, was I learned how to do a Western. I learned how right. to deal with the horses. I learned how to deal with the Wranglers. I learned how to deal with all that stuff, and I love it. And so then it came time to do another film, and it was like, well, now that I really know how to do a Western, let me do it again. I think I can even do a better job. So what's this? what can we expect in this one? Uh, well, this is, uh, uh, it's actually, uh, well, but again. Hate the Hateful Eight. It's a Hateful Eight. Is well, that a play on the Magnificent Seven? No, 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 no. No, it, no, it's, it, no it's not. You have to think of the Magnificent Seven when we hear I can, I can, I, Well, I can understand that. It's, but it's not a, about a, a team that comes together to do something together. No, why it's, not? It's eight people who are totally fucking hateful. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, there's not, I mean, part of the thing about the movie <laughs> is there's not a good guy or woman oh. in it. They're all, there's no heroes. There's, it's, it's like eight hateful people trapped in this one stagecoach stopover during a three-day blizzard and watching them 
deal with their issues. <laughs> so it's kind of a it's kind of a pick me up holiday thing. That kind of thing. <laughs> and I was gonna say, and it opens on Christmas Day. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why white people are killing themselves. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>